an exciting day because at sundown today is what? Rosh Hashanah. And it is the start. It's the, Rosh Hashanah basically means the head of the year, which is the start of the new year. So um, today is the start of the year 5777. Wow. Isn't that exciting? 5777. It starts tonight. Um, so it's a whole transition time. So, um, so basically another name for Rosh Hashanah is the Feast of, Tab uh, a Feast of Trumpets um, or the Day of Remembrance. Now, it is also the end of Jubilee. But don't all go, Ugh. do you know what? Over this time Jubilee, over this year of Jubilee that we've had, um, I believe that God has set a lot of things in motion that we have not maybe seen the fruition of it, but things have been put in place in this year. Things have been started this year that we're going to start walking into. Amen. So be encouraged that even though it might be like, oh, it's the end of Jubilee, it is, the, it is things set in motion over this year that God has put in place. Um, so I'm, I'm confident that, uh, that we are going to start experiencing some of those things that God put in place this year, um, especially in the sense of uh, inheritance and heritage. And one of the things that I felt like God was speaking to us as a family about was, and I think it's for, for us as a people, is um, Jessica started uh, doing, went on a weaving course and started learning how to do the old traditional weaving that they've always done in Cyprus, how they've made their own cloth and stuff like that. And she went on this course and did that. And just after, uh, not too long after that, Georgia went and did um, halloumi making, learning how to make halloumi. This is all part of heritage. It's the heritage. And it's sort of like, I felt like those were just symbolic of something that the Lord is restoring. He's restoring heritage. He's restoring your heritage. And it's up to you to kind of like say, well, what is my heritage? What has God called me into? What is our, our family DNA? What is our family heritage? And things like that. That those are things that God is going to set into motion. Those are things that you're going to start seeing coming into fruition. Um, and I think what the problem with a lot of us is that, you know, we're from the from like real West and you kind of don't have very deep heritages. Um, but... It's just inquiring of the Lord. What is it that you have for our family as an inheritance as a family that we are going to start walking into, that you put into place over this year? So be encouraged. might be the end of uh, Jubilee in terms of date, but it's be, it's, things have been set into motion. Okay, so Rosh Hashanah, um, head of the year. It's also a time where, the, where it was a celebration of the creation of the earth. When, when creation took, uh, came into existence. So it's a, it's a time of newness. It's a time of, uh, of a transition into something new. Okay. Um, it's also a time when the, uh, the, the trumpet is blown, the Feast of Trumpets. Okay. And the trumpet is normally blown about a hundred times during um, the trumpet being the shofar is normally blown about a hundred times. Um, over, the, over this period, over this time. But it's basically acknowledging that Jesus is the King of Kings from our perspective, that He is our Lord. Amen. Um, and we are making that de declaration that God is the King of the universe. Um, and also remembering basically that um, we're making ourselves ready. We are making ourselves ready for the kingdom of heaven. Okay. So it is an important time of making yourself ready for the kingdom. Did you hear me? Yes. Making yourself ready for the things of the kingdom. I, I, I'm excited really about these next 10 days because this is today is the ushering in of the 10 days of awe. Okay. It's the 10 days of awe. And the last day being um, Yom Kippur, okay, which is the, uh, the Day of Atonement. So these 10 days are 10 days of preparation, 
10 days of reckoning, 10 days of sorting th things out in your life, 10 days of letting go the past. All right? See, personally, I want to go into this in these 10 days um, intentionally. I want to go into these 10 days and I want God to deal with me. I want God to deal with my past, get rid of it. I want to bury that. It's past. It's very interesting that um, um, Perez died just before um, Rosh Hashanah. He is the last forefather. Okay, the last one involved in the um, in the establishment of of Israel as a nation in 1948, and it's almost as though there needs to be a new era. The past it's finished. He was a great man. He brought in great change, but there's a now new beginning. Um, so we see that just in Israel, and I found that very interesting. But anyway, um, so these are ten days of prayer self-examination and repentance it's preparing yourself for the kingdom of god it's preparing yourself for it's the it's it's the ushering in of the messianic kingdom this is the period known to the to the israelites is it's the messianic kingdom that will be ushered in in this time so god has purposefully uh, shown us to follow his calendar, okay, because this is a season of preparation for something of an ushering in in a greater measure of the kingdom of heaven. Yay? Yes. Yay? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, right, so as I said, the, the, um, the thing is the shofar is blown a hundred times. Um, four times specifically, and I just want to read what, the, what those four times are um, quickly. Um, okay, the, the first one is a long single blast, okay, and it's the sound of the king's coronation. Then there's three short um, war, uh, sorry, whale-like blasts signifying repentance. Three short whale-like, so it's a time of repentance. Then there is nine staccato blasts of alarm to awaken the soul. Then there are, then there is a great long blast for as long as you can blow. Amazing, isn't it? So we'll get somebody who can blow the shofar to come and do that this morning. Okay, so we've got the shofar. Who blows the shofar? Mike. We'll get Mike to blow the shofar. Okay, so what we're wanting to, you to do is a long single blast, three short whale-like blasts. No, no. Nine staccato blasts. Okay. <laughs> and a great long blast until you just can't anymore. Okay, you got that? All right. Um, let me just read some of the things that, that the normal, some of the customs that are, are done. A candle is lit. So maybe you want to go and do this this evening. Is go and light a candle in your home. Okay, the, the, the candle lighting is the Kadush. As with all the Jewish holidays, candles are lit just before the start of the holiday. Kaddish is also said over the wine. Then there's dipping apples or challah in honey. Before eating, before eating, the holiday meal offers up the wish for a sweet year ahead. All right, so you can take um, apple, dip it in honey, and eat that. That is you are saying we are going to have a sweet year ahead. Okay. What you also can do maybe is you can go and bake yourself a round challah loaf. A round one. Okay. And in that loaf you can put raisins, you can put all kinds of sweet things, honey, and so on. It is shaped round like crowns to suggest the kingship of God 
and as a reminder of the crown of righteousness that comes to those who obey the Lord. Okay, so it is, it is symbolizing the crown of righteousness that you will receive when you enter into heaven. Okay, because of his righteousness. Then there is the Tashliki. Okay, during the afternoon, many Jews perform the ritual of Tashliki or casting off, which we are going to do. There is a bucket there. There's some stones in that bucket. Um, you can maybe go and, because there's not enough stones in there, you can go and select a stone outside. There's some chalk there as well. What you're going to do is you're going to write the thing on that stone that you want out of your life. Okay? You're going to write on that stone something that you want rid of in your life. Maybe a thing you've struggled with or stuff. I'd suggest don't write a person. <laughs> <laughs> write something that you're personally struggling with, okay, in your life that you want rid of and you want to cast that thing off. Okay, make sense to you? Then... We're going to fill that bucket with water. I'm going to put that bucket outside. On that stone with chalk, you're going to write the thing on. And then you're going to throw it in the bucket of water outside. The water is going to rinse off that thing. It's going to be gone. Okay. So we're going to cast that thing off. It's a symbolic act. It's a prophetic act of what you believe that God's going to do in your life. Okay. Now, I, now remember last week I spoke about... How God normally takes the area where you are the most weakest, where you are the most vulnerable, and in that place, He becomes your strength. Amen. And it's in your place of vulnerability that God wants you to be empowered. All right, so when you cast that thing off, do it in faith, believing that that is the area in your life that God is going to empower you. That is the area in your life that you are going to find the most power. It's an area where you've had the most weakness. But it's where God's power is going to be made perfect in your life. Okay, so do it by faith that this is an area where you have been most vulnerable, but He is going to empower you in that place where you have struggled. Okay, and it's going to be the, to the glory of His name. It's going to be an area where it's going to bring Him glory. Hallelujah. Is that good? Yeah. Amen. I think so too. Okay. Um, so, okay. So, so that casting off time that we're going to do, which, uh, so don't run away. You want to do that. Um, we'll then have communion afterwards. So once you've done that, come and have communion. You and the Lord have communion. You, you seal that thing with the covenant that He has made available um, to you. You can do it together as a family, a couple, friends, or whatever. Okay, um, so personally, what am I sensing for 5777 is that it's a time of entrusting with spiritual truths, revelation, and depth. I feel that this is a year that God is going to entrust us with revelation. But I feel it's a kind of experiential revelation that God is going to start entrusting us with. He's taking us into something that is a lot deeper. Caroline has brought meat today. Okay, she's brought biltong from Zimbabwe. And what she felt while she was there was that this was symbolic of God bringing us into maturity. It's no longer time to be drinking milk, but time to be going on to meat. And that's the meat of God's word. That's the meat of his truth, the meat of maturing. All right. Interesting that you brought mature meat. Okay, um, so everyone is going to get a piece of biltong to chew on. Okay, even if you don't like it, eat it. Do you know, and I think that's prophetic because in our pre-service prayer meeting, one of the things that we prayed about was compromise. Don't eat only what you like in God's word. When God does something in your life, eat it all. Eat what you don't like as well. There's stuff that God puts his finger on and you don't like it. Don't try and explain it away. Don't try and prophesy over yourself that this is okay. I can have this in my life. This is okay. No. Eat it even if you don't like it. Okay. So um, no compromise. 
You're all going to have a piece of meat. Okay. Um, does everybody get a piece? Yeah, give everybody a piece. You can do that. All right. Now, I feel like the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. This is a time of the ushering in of the messianic kingdom. And God's kingdom is at hand. I feel like these 10 days is, pre- is preparation. God is, if, I feel if you, really, if you really embrace this time, I feel like God is going to bring us into something so much more. You personally, God's going to bring you into so much more. Um, and so it's a time of maturity. It's transition from an earthly to a heavenly um, type of life. Okay, so from the soulish to the spirit. Things that have been soulish in your life, I feel there's going to be a transition from things that have been soulish into things that are going to be kingdom-minded and kingdom-orientated. Okay? Um, So our eyes are going to start seeing, not from a soulish flesh perspective, but our eyes are going to start seeing as the Spirit of God is showing us. We're not going to look at the world anymore from a soulish perspective, but we're going to see what God's doing. And that's having kingdom, a kingdom mindset. Is even though I'm looking at the world from an earthly perspective, I can see what God is doing. And that's, what God's, that's what's going to start happening in our lives. We're going to start seeing from a spiritual perspective. Also a time of putting off the flesh, um, leaning not on the soul, or, uh, but l- teaching the soul to enter into God's rest. The soul needs to enter the rest of God. Okay? Do you understand that? When it says, make every effort to enter into my rest, God is speaking really about your soul. Our souls hunger for all kinds of things that are wrong comfort and things like that our soul needs to enter into god's rest there was a there was a word that we were listening to on tuesday and it was things are going to accelerate things are getting very very um fast things are going to start happening very very quickly but our soul will be at rest in that time we're going to be doing a lot of stuff but your soul is going to be at rest okay um Okay, so really what it's speaking about is contentment, is a contentment of the soul. And I feel if, you, if, you're going to, if, you, if this year you're going to embrace what the Spirit of God is, is bringing you into, it's going to be contentment of your soul. Amen? So your t- soul is content, and then you can embrace gr- much more the things of the kingdom of God. Amen. Everybody's sitting there, chewing away. All right, one scripture. Okay, Ephesians 1, verse 18. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Okay, this is what I believe for this year. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which He has called you, the riches of His glorious inheritance in the saints and His incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of His mighty strength. Amen. The same strength He exerted in Christ when raised Him from the dead. All right. That is what I believe is our inheritance for this year, is this scripture. So it's a time of awakening. Amen. A time of awakening. But what I want to do is I want to believe that it's also a time as we awaken spiritually as a church, that we'll see that impact um, our community around us. All right. I want to see people saved this year. I want to see the kingdom of God touch people around us. Amen see people saved, see people's lives turned around. Because what God, when God brings you into freedom, you become a house for those who are, who, are, who are a refuge. You become a refuge. Amen. So 
it's, it's definitely God bringing us into a time of freedom. Okay. Um, okay. Almost done. Almost finished. I didn't. Okay, another word that we got is, I believe that the tent this year is going to become a place of daily prayer. Oh. Okay, so did you hear me? The tent is going to become a place of daily prayer. And so an invitation goes out to each and every one of you that any time, any, any moment that you want to come, and just pray here, okay, is that I feel like daily prayer needs to start taking place here. It's, it's, we're, we're modeling something. We're modeling something of, of just building the throne of God in this place. I want to just, uh, in line with that, go to Psalm 61. Okay, Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Wow. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you have heard my vows, O God. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Increase the days of the king's life, his years for many generations. May he be enthroned in God's presence forever. Appoint your love and faithfulness to protect him. Then I will ever sing praise to your name and fulfill my, my vows day after day. Amen. Good scripture. Um, right, so I'm going to finish there. Um, so I invite you to go and get a stone. Can we fill that bucket? There's two yellow buckets over there. If we can fill this white bucket, take those stones out. Um, just put them on the floor, yeah. Okay, there's, there's some stones for those who can't go out and look for a stone. Um, and so outside, there's quite a lot of stones just lying outside here. Okay. So um, there's three pieces of chalk there. Thanks, lovey. This, actually, put this outside. All right, so just you in the quietness, you know, just go before the Lord and just, uh, just let the Holy Spirit lead you. All right, put down what you sense the Holy Spirit is showing you to put down. Okay, don't, don't be presumptuous at this moment. Just ask the Holy Spirit, is this what you want me to write down on that stone? Write it down and then go and throw it in the water and watch that stuff come off. Okay, cast it off. Um, and then we're going to ask Mike to blow the shofar.